And has yeah. Banksy ever sort of contacted you, emailed you? Has he ever said anything? You know? uh, he emailed me once. After the Lake Street, he sent me a uh, Banksy screen yeah. print, uh, signed it, and uh, I was very happy with that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I received a parcel from England. I opened it and said, wow, it's a <laughs> Banksy. <laughs> So it's uh, something that I keep uh, like uh, a jewel in my life. I'm Steve Sully, the founder of Woodbury House. We are a private art studio in London. Now I'm pleased to tell you we are now working alongside and promoting Black the Rap. He's the godfather of stencil graffiti and he has inspired people like the great British artist Banksy. It's my second podcast interview with him at his headquarters in Paris. So please enjoy the content. Je m'appelle Xavier Prou, alias Blake Lora. Je voudrais annoncer officiellement une, ma collaboration avec Woodbury House à Londres. Nous avons de grands projets. Suivez-nous. À bientôt à Londres. This is your, your, your house as well as your studio. Yeah. So you live here as well, yeah? Yeah. And you're constantly coming up with ideas, Constantly. Uh, I'm always uh, concentra concentrated on my work. And uh, not many people come, so uh, they don't disturb me. And, uh, That's important. And uh, yeah. I have a simple life, you know, like uh, family life. Good. And I don't see many people. I don't go outside. I don't go to... Uh, Parties, like yeah. Like you don't drink either, do you? No. No, I no. don't drink alcohol. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Keeps keeps you focused. Yeah. 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 So this is uh, last but, time uh, I was here. This wasn't here. This is uh, Hamilton. Richard Hamilton. R Richard, Richard and Bolton. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, and this, the body is my son. Okay. And I took the 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 the, the, the image of his face. Yeah. So it's like a, a modern Hamilton. Yeah. How did you come up with that idea and, and why did you do that? I want to make a tribute to uh, Richard in, okay. uh, in New York, you know, okay. so uh, since for a long time I, I was so influenced by him, you know, because when I saw his first work in uh, Paris and Naples in 1983, I saw his first work in Europe and I was so impressed by what I saw. I really like, like this guy. Unfortunately, I never met him, which is one of my regrets of my life. Well, this is really good. Really oh, cool. thank you. And is thank it you. finished or is it still working? It's, no, no, it's finished. I want to put a varnish on it because it's matte here. So I, I want it to be a little more uh, glossy. I'm preparing another one. Nice. With the Hamilton. I'm going to make a series of maybe five. It's really? a real tribute and a, when I was working on it, uh, I really feel like uh, Richard pushed me to make this. Uh, there was a, I had kind of communication with him, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like a spirit com communication with yeah. him, yeah. Really. These are like the shadow figures behind. Yeah, behind, yeah. Has this got the gloss over it? Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's, it's a varnish. It looks, looks really good once it's varnished. Yeah, yeah. I don't usually uh, work uh, with black and white uh, background, so it's, it's special for, uh, yeah. for Hamilton. I know these are on, on canvas, but a lot of your clients, a lot of your collectors like to collect stuff on the wood. Yeah, I love to, to is, work on is, the wood Is that too. because it's more authentic to the street? Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. You're right. But then I guess it's more traditional or more culturally sort of collect, collectible to have things on paper or canvas because it's easier to hang. Absolutely. But this makes it a bit more raw, Abs a bit more authentic. Yeah, more authentic, yeah. that's what I, I think, I think so too. Yeah, I did, there's something about it that just makes it stand out when, once it's on wood. 
Mm. I do like, obviously, the canvas, but the wood, there's something about it. Hey, the Gucci belt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right. This is uh, also my son, you know, I took the, I took the face on internet. Okay. Uh, uh, I thought it was going to be Sybil's uh, belt. And uh, <laughs> this is uh, Alex belt, okay. actually. Very fancy. Yeah. <laughs> and, what, and what's this piece called? I really like that, the angel. This is Beethoven. Beethoven, yeah. Beethoven. Yeah, this is Chopin, I think. Okay. This is Chopin. Who's this character underneath here, though? So it's an angel. I don't know if you know the music of Beethoven or Chopin. Or... They were touched by uh, the heaven, by the god, when they created their music. Okay. So... Uh, uh, you put these in between. Yeah, yeah, be yeah. Between, uh... yeah. Yeah, really nice. I love the butterfly. <laughs> yeah. My mother, she was uh, half Chinese, half French. So she believed uh, really in the Buddhist religion. The day she died, I dreamed she rebirthed as a butterfly. I love butterfly for this, yeah. that reason. Ladies and gentlemen, collectors, art lovers, fanatics, I'm so privileged to be here sitting next to this man, Mr. Black the Rat, uh, in his house stroke studio in Paris in France. To, for me, this has been a bit of a dream uh, because when I interviewed you uh, over a year ago, in actual fact, I've been watching your market for many years before that. You know, I've been learning about you, reading books about you, documentaries, news articles, uh, other artists ref referencing you. And over time, it, it, it was a natural progression for us to contact you, speak to you, start collecting your work, then start selling your work to our collectors and investors and lovers. And now I'm pleased to tell everybody that Woodbury House, Black the Rat and your team, we're going to be working together officially and we're going to be bringing you to, to the UK and also to London. So... Um, Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And Thank you very much. I'm very, you're welcome here. I'm very glad uh, to, uh, to, to meet you. It's a pleasure to work with you also because uh, I saw that you were very perseverant and uh, which is a good thing, which means that uh, uh, y y your commitment is uh, really strong in, the, in this uh, movement and uh, Thank you. in my work. And uh, thank you for coming, and uh, I'm very glad to be to to have uh, this time with you. Perfect. Yeah, we we are very honoured. As you well know, we've been working on the Richard Hamilton market since mm. 2014, and we've taken his market from th this sort of level to a much bigger level. And what we've done is we've we've told a story, we've told a narrative, and then when we've looked at your artwork, we said, well, this just makes complete sense. We feel like there's a there's a connection there. We've been reading about you, we've been buying your work, we've now been promoting your work, and I just feel this is a perfect time to launch Black Lorette back into the UK, back into London, and to get everybody talking about who you are and why you're so significant to art history. I feel quite privileged because between you and your wife, Sybil, who's absolutely fantastic, she's the boss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she's the person in, in the background that makes a lot of things happen. It seems like, it feels like a very family run business, yeah. you know, and you're, you're very, very close and you know who you want to work with and who you don't want to work with and what sort of projects, you know, you would like to work on. How come you chose Woodbury House? What, what was your final decision working with it's, us? It's difficult to, to, to say because uh, there are so many people who are interested in that, uh, in that movement and in, in my work. And, but uh, s many people are not serious also, you know. Many, many people are only interested to make uh, some money or some... Uh, some uh, so to, to to get famous themselves uh, through through my work and uh, 
so it's very difficult to make the difference between the good people and the people that they want. So that's the reason for a long time uh, uh, when people uh, ask me to work with them, uh, I don't answer or, uh, you know, I, so when people are perseverant and w so I see at that time that uh, their commitment in the in my work uh, and yeah. I saw that you were serious uh, uh, by through Richard Bolton also because you represent Richard Bolton in uh, in England and I love this artist uh, and uh, it was uh, uh, when I saw that you were working with him I said th those people are serious because not so many people are was interested by uh, Richard Bolton so that's the reason why I'm, I'm working with you now and I'm very happy to go back to, to London because I had some uh, shows in London about 10 uh, long time ago now 2006 it seems to me very uh, very uh, uh, near from my from now but uh, uh, it's a long time ago so uh, I'm very, very, very glad to work uh, with a gallery in London, with your gallery in London, because uh, London is so important uh, place in the world. I think it's the most, it's most important place, more important than New York, uh, in my humble opinion, because uh, every uh, British people, they, they like art very much, much more than the French people like. French people don't like art very much. Uh, the, the British people, they like art, they like every kind of uh, art, music, uh, fashion, uh, art, paintings and everything like that. So uh, it's very important to be... I used to say that when you are known in London, you are known all over the world. You know, when you are famous in London, you are famous all over the world. Be because in Australia, in the United States, in Canada, in uh, South America, they all look what happens, you know, what, uh, what is happening in London yep. about art. Yep. So uh, if you are recognized in London, you are recognized all over the world. I, is, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. It's the most important. It used to be Paris in the 19th century, Paris, 20th yeah. century. It used to be Paris, but it's, it's not Paris anymore. It's London. Well, there's still a big, because where we make ourselves is quite naturally London and the UK, Paris and other parts of Europe, and also New York. And I think between these three hubs, this is where most of the culture and the demographic and the buyers and the collectors come from but i have to say you know uh, we get a lot of inquiries all the time uh, in london specifically for street art hamilton Absolutely. and now we've we passively uh, shown your work and mentioned that we're going to be working with you to some of our collectors i mean i've got to say it's been so easy for us to promote your work because they said well you know, if you've represented Hamilton and now you're representing Black, it just makes sense for us to buy, you know, your work as well because it complements what they've already got. So it's very, very exciting times. Okay. And when we do a real big push online and then we do a big show in London, yeah. Soho Mayfair, okay. I think I think we're going to draw a big, big crowd in. I think the PR, the press are going to be writing all about it. And I think we're going to get some very, very important collectors there. Because your, your work deserves it. You've already got really good people collecting your work. You've got some very, very famous people that have collected your work and who've, who've actually been quite vocal about it. And I think you're going to attract a lot more. So before we talk about, you know, who influenced your work, Richard Hamilton, or even, you know, when you used to work in London, let's take it all, all the way back. Yeah. So, you know, as an artist, you're, you're famous now, but there was once a stage where you was beginning. So talk to me about that. Why did you begin to do art? What influenced you to do, to do art? And yeah, like how did it all begin? It's a long story. Okay. <laughs> so I come from a family, uh, they were all artists. My father was an architect. My grandfather was an architect. My 
uncle, they, my two uncles, they were painters, artists. Uh, my aunt was an uh, actress. Uh, so, and they, my, uh, my, my aunt knew very well the surrealistic movement. André Breton and Max Ernst. Uh, she was very near from Max Ernst. So I raised up in, a, in this kind of, uh, of uh, uh, family who were interested by art. So I raised up with uh, many paintings. My, my grandfather, who was an architect, he was a painter also. He was, fa he was famous as an architect, my grandfather, in the, in the 30s. And uh, so I raised up in this uh, in this climate of uh, of art, and uh, uh, when I was after uh, w when I was uh, twenty years old, I I wanted to make uh, the Beaux Arts School, you know. Okay. So I went to the Beaux Arts School uh, for a long time, and and I studied architecture, I studied paintings, etchings. Lithography. Uh, I didn't study the sculpture, which is one of my regrets because because I love sculpture. Yeah. But I'm not a sculptor. In uh, 1972, I went to New York, and for the first time of my life, I saw street art, and it was a revel revelation for me, really big revelation. I remember to ask to my friend Larry, why people are doing this, you know, what does it mean? Because at that time, 1972, nobody in the world, except in New York, would understand, uh, understood what happened in the street of New York and yeah. the subway. So I remember to ask to my friend, uh, what happened here, you know, what people are doing this? And Larry said, I don't know, there are crazy people, maybe some sect. Uh, some uh, satanic sect, uh, yeah. things like that. So uh, I kept I kept this in my mind. It was very strong because to draw in the street, people are, were s making signature and uh, they were drawing, you know, characters in the streets, and and uh, it was something so new and so 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 disturbing, you know, that uh, I kept I kept this in my mind for ten years. And uh, I started to make graffiti in 10 years after 1981. Uh, nice. uh, so I started in Paris to make rats because Paris is full of rats. In 1983, I saw another re revelation. Richard Hamilton was the first graffiti artist to uh, travel to Europe to paint uh, in the, on the world of Europe. He was the first one to do that. And uh, in 1983, I saw his shadows in Paris, and I said, "Wow, it's so great! <laughs> so, f it no, it was huge, and full of paint, you know, yeah. splash and uh, and and hidden in the street, hidden in the street, and some. It was something like somebody was hid was hidden in a selling drugs, or I don't know, or hidden because it was a. Uh, it was very strong, very, 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 very strong. So at that time, I realized that to make something big, it was important. So before that, I, w I was making rats, I was making some portrait, but small, small pieces. Yeah. And when I realized that the impact of uh, of uh, Ambleton Richard uh, works, uh, I, I, I told me, I said to me. Uh, I have to make big things, you know, large characters in the streets. So uh, I started to make a uh, few months after, a few weeks or few months after, uh, I started to make, uh, uh, to make uh, large uh, characters of people in the street. And I start with uh, an Irishman that I took in the newspaper, from a photo that I took in the newspaper. He was an Irishman. Uh, screaming against a soldier and he was very brave this guy was very brave I remember the photo uh, the photo was you you could see a soldier with a gun aiming someone with a gun and the old man old Irishman was screaming against the uh, the soldier 
And I said, wow, this photo is so strong. I'm going to put this man in the street of every city in France. So my first character was an Irishman, and, uh, what, old Irishman. What type of reaction did that piece get in the streets of Paris? So it took different, uh, uh, different reaction. Uh, people didn't know that he was, uh, he was an Irishman screaming against a soldier. Yeah. So for some people, he was a Buster Keaton. So some people told me, oh, you have met a Buster Keaton in the street. I said, no, it's not a Buster Keaton. It's a, it's a, he is a, an Irishman. Uh, or some, some people thought he was a derelict uh, asking money or for, to people. But uh, so it, it took, so I realized at that time that when you leave an image in the street, it takes different meanings to the people, which is very interesting, uh, which is something very interesting, because people, when they see an image in the street, they give their own interpretation of uh, what means the, the image. Yeah. And there's something very interesting in the, in the street art movement. For sure. Because it's the same thing for every artist, you know. Yeah. So it gives to the people the the possibility to to have a different meaning and different uh, how, how can I say um, it's a very interesting okay yeah <laughs> okay. so so um, I, I agree you could show one image to ten people and they might react or respond in one way two weeks later you might show it to another ten people and they re react and respond in a different way and the great thing about art especially art like yours, which is so great, is subjective. It, it creates emotion and there's different messages there. So naturally, Paris was your canvas. You know, you started yeah. to put your paintings up in your stencils. But then fast forward the clock, you're now everywhere. You know, in America, I mean, our, we, we made a Richard Hamilton documentary in New York last year in November. One gallery, Black the Rat. Another gallery, Black the Rat. I mean, you're so famous in, in so far away from where you live and then you go to different parts of Europe and they're they're talking about you so where have you worked you know where wh which cities have you gone to to one to do some street art but two to sell your work so I've uh, I, I've been in many many different countries I've been uh, in all of South of America I've been to uh, Buenos Aires Lima Peru Mexico City uh, in Santiago de Chile uh, New York, uh, San Francisco, everywhere. Marrakesh, and yeah. I left some uh, some stuff in uh, Marrakesh also. So, these stencils, what 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 do they all mean? You know, because some of them have got famous people on it. Yeah. This one here is actually you. Yeah. Yeah. This one behind you is your son's body, but Richard Hamilton's face on it. Yeah. So, how do you come up with these different ideas, and what do they actually mean, and what's what what what's behind the style? Oh, uh, it's it's it's. Um it depends. It depends of uh, of the time. It depends of the city uh, where I have to work. For example, this uh, image of uh, Hamilton, I'm planning to put it to to paint it in New York as a tribute to uh, uh, Richard Hamilton. Hamilton. Um, it, it depends. You know. It depends uh, the feelings I have. Uh, for the city, for example, uh, the man who w I, I call this uh, painting the man who walks through the walls. So it's the idea is that uh, this guy, which is uh, myself actually, uh, is traveling all of the, all over the world, but he doesn't need to take the plane. He goes through the walls and he reappeared in different city. I paint him in uh, Taiwan, everywhere, in London. Yeah. Many, I put many of them uh, in London yeah. too, in 2006. And um, what I've noticed as well, being here twice now, yeah. you have the canvas works, but then you also have works that are on wood. Yeah. And what I like about the wood, yeah. it's quite authentic and true to its grassroots, which is street art, because yeah. that's how you started. Yeah. So, I mean, this one is a bit of both, isn't it? You've got a bit of canvas, bit of wood on there. Yeah. Um, 
your collectors now, what do they prefer? Do they prefer the canvas? Do they prefer the wood? Or is it a bit of a mix? It depends. It yeah. depends on the collector. You know, for, for a street artist, it's quite difficult to find a, a way to show his artwork in the gallery because the gallery is a completely different space than the street. Yeah. If you work in the street, if, when I'm working in the street, I leave an image. The environment is very important yeah. for the image. Mm -hmm. It took different meanings, d depends the environment. Yeah. But when you are in the gallery, when you represent your work in the gallery, it's a completely different space. And uh, so it's very difficult to find a way to show your work, to be honest with the, go the collectors and uh, to say the things you're going to buy in the gallery, it's a memory of what happened before in the street. Yeah. You know, the work in the street is 100% important. And the work in the gallery is also 100% important because if we don't show our work in the gallery, there, is, there will not be a memory of what happened before in the street. Okay. For example, we don't have anything from the street artists in New York in the, in the 60s. Yeah. Because uh, at that time, no gallery was represented by the artists in New York. So we don't have anything. We don't have any, anything uh, concrete to, sh to remember yeah. what happened in New York in the 60s. Yeah. So it's very important to keep a memory of what happened in the street. So uh, when I have a show in the gallery, it's uh, to say to the people, the thing that I'm showing here is uh, images I have done in, in the street before. Yeah. Canvas is easy to, to pick up to pick up, it is all easy to carry, it's easy to, to ship. And uh, on the wood it's more difficult because it's heavy and it's, uh, it's not, uh, we can't roll it. And, but I, I think uh, the, the, the works in, in, on the wood is more uh, authentic than the works in the, on, uh, on canvas. But I tried to find on canvas the background on my canvas, I try to find something uh, which is near from the from the wall. Okay. You know, I try to find the the poet the, the poetic things from the wall yeah. to reproduce it on the back in the background of the. It's. Uh, yeah, you're trying to make it authentic. Authentic to the wall. Yeah. But it's because difficult. I want to be honest with yeah. the really honest yeah. with the with the people. Ma makes total sense. Yeah. So uh, we've got back at Woodbury House, because we bought some, the small rats, yeah. uh, which you spray, which are, which are really, really good. Yeah. But also what I like, which is next door with Sybil, your wife, yeah. is now the rat is standing up and it's yeah. and it's, it's up on its feet. And how is the rat itself, because it's iconic to your name, yeah. how's that evolved, you know, over time? I would say thank you, Banksy, because <laughs> thank you, Banksy, because uh, he br he brought a new um, a new uh, style in the in the, in the street art through his his own rats, you know. I don't want to say that a copy uh, Banksy, did, but did, uh, did Banksy probably copied you though because you're the one no he didn't copy me he was influenced by me influenced by Influ you influenced. so so he must have saw your rat first and then he maybe took the rat and yeah, changed and it. changed it and then you he changed took, it again he, he took the concept of rat which is a very inter interesting concept because uh, rats are the most uh, wild are the the wildest animals in the in the cities you know and the uh, I've read somewhere that uh, after the big flood, only rats will survive in the city. So uh, he took the concept of the of these uh, animals. He make evo in a, in the evolution of the rat. Of the rat. Yeah. And uh, so he represents the rats differently, with funny image or uh, 
Very strong image also, very yeah. strong. Yeah. yeah. I'll read you something from uh, The Independent. Yeah. Newspaper, mm. famous newspaper in the UK. This was written on Saturday the 19th of April 2008. Black Lerat, this is not Banksy. And as you start to read through the article, they basically say that you were the godfather of creating the stencil art. And this is, this is a snippet. Yet, if Banksy is indeed the daddy of political conscious graffiti, let me introduce you to the godfather, Black Lerat. The 56-year-old Frenchman was stenciling city walls while Banksy was getting to grips with crayons. Mm. So what they're clearly referencing here is, you know, way before the rise of Banksy, you were creating these stencils and you were making a political stance, you know, mm. in some of your works. I mean, how much do you agree with yeah, the independent there? Yeah, I agree, I agree completely. Yeah. yeah. I agree completely. So, so with Banksy, um, some of the articles I've read, it's almost like a love-hate relationship between you both. And then some of the articles, it's like, well, no, Banksy absolutely adores you because one of the articles says, every time I think about doing a new work, mm. I've found out that Black has actually done this 10, 20 years previous. Mm. But then also when I've spoken to you before, you know, Banksy might, you know, get a little bit aggressive with you and say, hey, you know, you know, you've said this about me. So, what's the relationship like? Is it is it is it a good one, or is it a sometimes a bit love and hate? Tell me more about it. Uh, more that I love more than I hate him. You know, I don't I don't, I don't hate anybody in any, yeah. any, any way. Uh, no, I really uh, I think uh, Banksy is, is a very clever guy. To be influenced by my work means that he's very clever because he understood that when you make stencil in the streets, uh, it's a very easy way to, to work freely and to, uh, because when you make a stencil, it goes very fast. You, you spend only uh, 10 minutes to make a stencil. And, uh, and so uh, he was very clever to uh, understand that and to, uh, to use the stencils to yeah. make uh, his own work. Uh, I really like his work, really, really, really. Uh, I'm very uh, surprised how he was. He's so famous now because he knows how to uh, how to. Um, he understands the art market very well. Mm. Uh, he knows absolutely how to. I, I don't want to say manipulate it, but he knows how to works with the, the art market, influence yeah. the art market influence the media influence and we, it's something that i don't know how to do it you know i don't know well, uh, working with us yeah yeah you know how to do it yeah. but i don't know i'm you know my, i'm old school you know in my generation we didn't know the gallery used to do everything for you for art for an artist so i'm old school i'm an old generation of artists the new artists they know like Banksy, like Shepard Ferre, like uh, many older artists, they 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 control their own uh, their own uh, uh, market market and PR. Uh, yeah yeah and advertising Strate yeah. strategy they control their own strategy and everything, which is a good thing you know for the new artists I think it's very it's good thing, uh, so uh, but I don't know how to do it because uh, yeah. I'm old school. Yeah. Uh, so thank you if you... Uh, well, we've, if we've, you are. we've got a blueprint yeah. that we've done with Hambleton yeah. and we took Hambleton from his Shutterheads 4 to 8,000. Now they're selling at 40, yeah. 50, yeah. 60,000 yeah. and, and more. I know. So, you know, look, we're still learning, yeah. but we have a blueprint and yeah. we know certain things to do yeah. in order to bring the awareness, buzz, hype, the excitement and to draw in the big collectors and the big names, and that's, that's important. Just going back to Banksy then, I mean, um, I think you was telling me before that you was in the same room as him. You have met him, but you can't actually remember who, who he was. That's Ben's, Ben Hines told me that. But, ben Hines, uh, ben yeah. Hines, yeah. yeah. Ben Hines told me that, yeah. Yeah. We were in the same room, and we yeah. talked together, and, uh, yeah. but I didn't know, yeah. And has yeah. Banksy ever sort of contacted you, emailed you? Has he ever said anything? You know? uh, he emailed me once, 
uh, he sent me after the t the tunnel, you know, the um, Lake Street. Lake Street. Yeah. After the Lake Street, he sent me uh, uh, to say thank you, uh, Blake. Uh, he sent me uh, a, a screen print, which so, uh, uh, Banksy sc screen print. Banksy screen yep. print. Uh, signed, and uh, I was very happy with that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I received a parcel from England. I opened it. and said, "Wow, it's a <laughs> <laughs> Banksy." <laughs> So it's uh, something that I keep uh, like uh, a jewel in my life because uh, it's a uh, recognition. Uh, yeah, recognition. Recognition. Yeah. So, uh, so in 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 this uh, show that you you just referenced there, so Leak Street Tunnels mm. is a famous tunnel yeah. area in London mm. in Waterloo mm. where big shows happen. But the most important thing, any street artist from any walk of life will come along and do, do their work without uh, feeling threatened or feeling like they're going get, to get in trouble by the authorities. Yeah. It's a place that you're allowed to go. Yeah. And Banksy said to the media, he was painting or doing some work, and he said, I'm going to leave this space for Black because I want him yeah. to use this wall yeah, right. for his art. And, and you went along there and ended up doing your work there, right? Yeah, yeah, Next yes, to yes, Banksy. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. yeah. Yes, you, yes. You I spent, uh, I spent uh, an afternoon in uh, London and I paint the, the wall, yeah. Yeah. It, it was organ, organized by also by a guy co called Tristan Manko, okay. who is a, f a Banksy friend. Okay. And uh, yes, it was uh, something very strong. Uh, I don't know if it's still there. No, it's, uh, it, they repainted. Uh, There's they regular re shows, regular artists. Oh, out. I'm still, very, very surprised. It's still, it's still a, a place for painting. Absolutely. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe okay. maybe when we, we you come to London, we'll go there. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. But again, going back to what you just said, he recognised you as an important artist. Yeah. Hence why he told the media he wanted to give you... Uh, save uh, a piece of the wall for you yeah. to, to paint on yeah. and then to gift you one of his own you know works yeah. is, is a really really good sign was there ever a time like where he might have got annoyed you know and he and he and he flared up with you because I heard that Banksy could be a bit up and down maybe. really yeah yeah no, yeah I don't know I don't know um, I can understand he's so famous now he, he has so many people ask him him to him so many things that uh, is going to be for him it should be uh, difficult you know to have relation with people i guess yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, in my small uh, life uh, many people ask to me many things also and then i know it's difficult you know to yeah. to answer uh, to answer to the people uh, so for Banksy, i, I guess it's, uh, it's, it's it should be terrible because yeah 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 it's, because it's hard, hard. at each time somebody uh, when when someone uh, contact Banksy is for something you yeah know? so sure. it's not for to get friend yeah to be friend or to be uh, when, when was the last time you heard from him maybe two thousand thirteen or. Okay. When I when I had he contacted me when I had a, a, an interview before the Channel Four. Okay. After that. Okay. What did he say to you then? <laughs> <laughs> Something you can't it's, talk about. No. Yeah. Okay. It's a private. Yeah. Would you like to ever collaborate, work with Banksy? Because a lot of people talk about you and Banksy in the same in the same conversation. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fantastic that? Banksy, Black the Rat, Black the Rat, Banksy done a few works together. Oh yeah, it would be a dream. Yeah, uh, I, I hope some, sometimes before I die, because I'm I'm 70 years old now, so I start to be old. Before I die, yes, you, I would like to, because uh, uh, we are important people in the street art mov movement, and so uh, to uh, to make a collaboration sometimes. It would be important for the history of art. I think so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. But uh, well, I don't know. I don't know him actually. Uh, I never. Somebody told me that I met him, but uh, I'm not sure it was true. Or so uh, I never met him. So I don't know what sure. does he thinks exactly yeah. uh, about well, that. Now you're working with us, and we obviously got a big presence in London. Yeah. Maybe there could be a way where we could. You know, get get it would get, be great. get them over, and maybe we could talk about a project together. It would be great. Yeah. So, apart from 
Banksy, you know, um, you've inspired many other artists, but someone's probably inspired you. And I know you've mentioned Richard Hamilton. Mm. He's known as the Godfather of Street Art. He yeah. was coined that by the New York Times. And coincidentally, or um, sort of the irony of having this conversation with you, because you're known as the father of stencil graffiti. And I've actually evolved that. Mm. I call you the Godfather mm. Of stencil art because I really think you are. I mean, even in that independent mm. article there, they mm. call you the the the, the Godfather. That's mm. their own words. Mm. When people call you the father the of stencil father. graffiti or the Godfather of stencil or the art, yeah, <laughs> or the grandfather, <laughs> um, how does that make you feel? I'm very I'm very proud of that about that. You know, you know, I give I give I give uh, uh, forty years of my life to this movement of graffiti art and street art and uh, so it's uh, I gave most of my life to this movement so it's very important to be recognized for me and uh, I'm very glad I'm very proud of it you yeah know, when somebody t recognized that uh, I, I, I've done something in my life so what what a man can expect more than uh, that you know yeah uh, I'm very proud of, of this you know uh, I gave my life to this movement, to the, this art, and uh, to be recognized now as uh, someone important in this movement, it's, uh, it's uh, something uh, that uh, great I'm very glad, uh, yeah. honor, honored. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, so Hamilton was a great inspiration yeah, to you. Yeah, you were really fascinated, blown fascinated. away by his work. Blood so away. much so, the only artist that you've ever bought, which is Next Door and we've yeah. looked at, <laughs> yeah. you bought it in auction in 1999. 98? 1990. 1990. 1990. For less than $2,000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it only had an estimate for $3,000. Yeah. You bought it. Um, it's a big sort of jumping uh, original shadow figure. Yeah. And it's the only artist that you've ever bought. So tell me, what? why did you... Why did you want to buy his work? Because he, when I, when, as I told you before, when I saw his work, I saw this is the guy the most important in this movement. You know, only in my humble opinion, uh, only few artists will stay uh, in the future. Uh, Banksy will stay. Shepard Ferry will stay. Uh, uh, of course, Richard Ambleton will stay because. In my humble opinion, is the most important street artist, more important than the others. Also, there is a guy in France called uh, Gérard Zlotikamion. He used to make street art in 1963 in okay. Paris okay. with chalk. He was painting this uh, th this kind of uh, okay. fig figure. So this guy is very important for me also. Okay. He's absolutely unknown. He's still alive. He's in my humble opinion, is very, very also important, okay. and influence he influenced me also, because I knew his work, I saw his work in Paris. Uh, so previous conversation, so you bought uh, the Richard Hamilton from Christie's. You actually showed us the book earlier from Christie's, the original one, and in there was even Keith Haring's that were bought for fifteen thousand dollars, which yeah. sounds crazy now because yeah. they are selling at. Five million, ten million, yeah. you know, e e even more. And Hamilton's now. I mean, we we've, we've seen sales up to about two two million now, you know, and and even beyond that, which is which is phenomenal. Um, so Hamilton was a big inspiration. You men mentioned uh, Shepard Ferry. What about people like Space Invader? Space Invader. I know you know Ben Ayn is a, is a friend, you know. Um, there's a pure few evil, other pure, pure evil. evil. So uh, you've collected Slinkachu, all. I love Slinkachu. So you've taken all their work as well. You've done swaps. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have many works from Shepard Ferre. I have many works from uh, from Pure Evil. Uh, I don't have anything from Ben Hines, actually. No, I don't okay. have anything from Ben Hines. I have to. We'll get <laughs> to you make, on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I have things uh, from uh, from many many artists. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. Yeah, really changed, yeah. And. Um, so tell me and about the things that also you said that uh, it's a very good investment. Art is a very good inv investment in a hurry to se uh, resell your the work th that you bought. It's a very good investment because I bought this Ambleton one thousand five hundred dollars in nineteen ninety, and now 
I, th I know that I can sell it for 300,000 pounds. Pounds. Yeah, you could. Easy. I could do. So you, get, you can see the difference in, thir in the 30 years. The, it's a very good investment. The, the growth so you bit. must say to the people that art is a very good investment. If you know how to choose which artist you buy, it's a, it can be a very good investment. Well, I think it has a double-edged side to it. If you can adore the artist, yeah. like the artist, like the movement, yeah. like the circumference of the whole entire, You're right. um, you know, uh, founders and the people that created this this movement of street art or, or, or stencil or, you know, as we said before in another conversation that when we talk about street art graffiti, there's different pools now of, you know, of, of street art. It's not just one style. There's, it's always evolving. Yeah, it's, unlike, it's unlike pop art or, or modern art. The street art culture is all, always evolving. It's always adapting. But if you can buy important people within that history segment and you like their artwork as well for sure over time if they're backed by the right people if the right collectors are backing them the right museums the right shows the right content it can go from one level yeah. to an next and yeah. lots of our clients have benefited yeah. from yeah. that from yeah. from richard hamilton yeah. predominantly but yeah. some yeah. other artists yeah. as well yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. and obviously your art's gone up since yeah. since you were and when younger. you see bon for bonksy also you know when he was selling uh, for nothing in 2000 in 1999, he was selling for uh, $300 a painting. I don't know, I don't yeah. know exactly, but now he, he, the same painting would cost uh, $20 million. Yeah, uh, well, Love is in the Bin, which is the one that shredded in half, yeah. that sold for close to £20 million pound last 20 year. Million close, pounds. Close to £20 million. God. And it was only a f uh, 18 months, two years before, where it was sold for... I think about a million or two. So okay. the point is, it is a good investment. It's but at the same time, if you can like it and enjoy it, you've got to win, win. So when you used to work in London, uh, this was back in 2006. And I think it was a guy called Mike Snell that reached out to you and yeah. said, are you still painting? You said, yes. Yeah. He came over to you here, got some of your artwork, took it back to London and started selling. Yeah. And Mike Snell, as far as I know, the research I've done, he's part of the Connor Brothers. Yeah. And the Connor Brothers, you know, their market has gone really well. You know, they, they've been selling a lot of artwork. There's a lot of galleries, not just in London, but worldwide selling. So he's quite a smart guy. So, yeah, very smart. So, so, very smart. So to recognise you as an artist back then and to start promoting your work before anybody else did, that's, that's testament to, to, to the fact that he knew you were going to be someone. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had a good, good. Uh, we say in France, we had a good nose. You know, he had good feelings. A good, uh, you know, he knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because uh, at that time, in in two in uh, one, uh, it was two thousand six. Uh, I received an email from him uh, at the beginning of internet. Uh, two thousand six. It was uh, uh, not many people had. In, uh, had, uh, had uh, so uh, I received an email from him say, saying, uh, are, you, are you still painting, making paintings? And I said, yes. I said, yes. And he answered automatically. He answered, oh, OK, I'm coming tomorrow. I'm going to take the train. And uh, please pick up me at the train station. So we, I pick up him at the train station. The day after the, the, day after the, the email. The email and uh, so he came here, he saw two, uh, two or three paintings, he said, okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to organize uh, you a, a show at Leonard Street Gallery, uh, because I have a friend, he has a gallery in Le at Leonard, Leonard Street in September. So I spent the, I spend the, the, the summer working for him. Yeah. I prepared about 20 paintings. And um, so I, I shipped, we shipped the, the paintings to the Leonard Street, and the day before the show, everything, everything was sold. Wow. Wow, sold wow. out. So I said, wow, that's something. London, yeah. I, have to, <laughs> I have to take uh, London as an important city. Yeah. It was, very, it was the first time in my life where, that, that uh, it was sold out before the show. And I said, wow, okay. 
So uh, we worked together for two or three years with Mike Snell, and Mike Snell took different direction after and, uh, yeah. after that. And, uh, but uh, he was very very good. He was very, uh, you know, he had the, he was young like you, you know, young guy, and uh, he had the energy of the young people. You know, I remember him. Uh, we we had a trip in New York together, in in October or two thousand six, October or September. I don't remember exactly. So we had a trip in New York, and for a show in New York. And uh, I remember he came to New York with a lot of uh, screen print on his arm like that, and uh, he had the the box for um, for to pay, you know, pay, so not PayPal, but uh, he had the um, uh, credit card uh, credit card yeah. box, you know, yeah. for yeah. and during the the crowd when the crowd was uh, was uh, staying. You walk around. You look around and selling, selling yeah. etchings, selling a screen print to the people in the crowd. You know, so he had a lot of energy. He had, a, he wanted to have success, and I love people like that. Yeah. And I think you are like, I'm sure you are a guy like that. Well, and British people are really strong people. Very uh, energy. They have a lot of energy. Yeah. Compared to French people who are <laughs> well, we, sleeping. We have definitely got the energy for business. We've yeah. got the energy for the art market. Yeah. And the most important thing yeah. is we've got the energy to build you back into London yeah. and get you to where you need to be. And the difference between you and Mike said that Mike said didn't know anything about the art market uh, at the beginning. He knew a little bit as the difference that you know uh, very well the art market, you know the yeah. characters, you know. You are introducing the art market uh, very strongly, and uh, but at that time, you know, it, it was really the beginning. You know, two thousand six, uh, Banksy had a show in two thousand four or five mm -hmm. in London, where he sold everything. Uh, yeah, but it was not uh, a big, uh, big things. You know, so it, uh, for him, it was difficult. You know, to contact the people for for my snail, it was not easy to introduce me to the British people, and uh, it was hard for him. Yeah. So uh, I recognize that. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike Snell. I didn't see him for a long time, hmm. but I would like, I would love to meet him again. Well, no doubt when we do this big show in London, he's probably going to appear. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that, 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 I hope so, that'd yeah. be great, and I would love to meet him as well. I think he's yeah. uh, he done great things for you, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a good chapter of your life. But Absolutely, Woodbury yeah. House. Now we're we're here to to carry on and take take the baton and, and yeah. take you to the next it's, level. It's it's a, it's, a, it's not the same level. It's a you yeah. are, are a high level. Thank you. Thank With you. Mike Snell, it was uh, it was okay. It was very interesting. It was very I was very happy to have a show in London and everything. But uh, it was not the same same level. Yeah. But it's almost twenty years yeah. after. Yeah, yeah. So you're seventy. Yeah, you've got obviously plans with us. Yeah. Um, over the next five years, ten years, yeah. what do you want to achieve from your market? What types of new works are you going to do? What new projects, or do you just take things as they come? I take things as they come, you know. Uh, and I'm working on project uh, as they come, and uh, uh, I'm going to work until my death, you know, for sure. I'm sure. Uh, I, I hope I have some some years yeah. to live uh, <laughs> more, but uh, we never know, you know. Yeah. I have a friend who, so many friends uh, passed away uh, uh, the last years. You know, terrible. Yeah. Uh, some people, some people, uh, some street artists, uh, mm. French street artists, uh, passed away, and uh, so uh, we never know. But but. Uh, I'm going to work until my death, until I pass away. Me too. You me too? too. Okay. Yeah, I'm a workaholic. Yeah, me, me too. I, if, I, if I'm not working, I feel like I'm not achieving. Yeah. And I need to work to It's a waste of on. time. Yeah. And when I was young, I waste my time so, I was so, so, time, so many times. Yeah. Well, look, I'm really looking forward to uh, when we get back to the UK. Yeah. Start really aggressively 
pumping the content out there, okay. educating okay. the audience, setting a date to really launch you, do this big I'm show. I'm sure it's going to work. I think it's going to be absolutely every, incredible. You know, every star are the, are in this, are the good place for that, you know. I mean, uh, everything is uh, ready for that to be uh, really. I'm I'm little famous, but I'm not famous like uh, Banksy or like uh, Chappelle Ferry, uh, or like uh, other people like uh, Ambe Richard Ambulton is more famous. But everything is ready to uh, to be. Uh, everything is in place to be very very famous all over I the world. So. Yeah, I believe I so. Yeah, I believe so. And uh, I'm sure. Uh, when when we we're gonna have a show in uh, in london uh it it will be a success it will uh, be a major success uh, uh, i'm sure about yeah that. yeah for sure i'm very confident uh, you're really important to art history and i think as we were saying with your son outside yeah, earlier yeah. there's some good artists out there that look nice yeah but there's other artists that look great, yeah. but they're significant to art history. Without them, without you, yeah. there would be no the other artists today. You, you've actually inspired so many people, and without you, I don't think the market would be as good it is as, as it is today. So that's why working with you is, is such a, a privilege. You know, it really, it really is. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much thank for your you time. Very much. Thank you for letting us into your studio and yeah. into your home. and. Um, Watch this space, I'm very, very excited. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you.